a call right now. Let's go ahead and talk to Paul in New Jersey. Go ahead, and thanks for calling. Hello, Alex. Hi. Alex, uh, I remember uh, Mike Pompeo a few months ago trying to paint a brush about um, Iran being the center of uh, exporting terrorism throughout the world. But if you check from uh, University of Maryland's uh, website, it's called the... Uh, uh, the Global Terrorism Database, and it's actually linked to the uh, Department of Homeland Security. And you research this, and this was a news item several years ago, that 94% uh, of the terrorism throughout the world is Sunni-sponsored terrorism. Uh, as we know, Iran is a Shiite nation, and so if we take out the 94%, then the Shiites are only responsible for 6% of the global terrorism, which is a small percentage. In fact, the matter is Al-Qaeda was Sunni-sponsored terrorism, ISIL, El-Nusra, Jundalad, uh, uh, God's Army, a, a whole assortment of these global terrorist groups, uh, and they're the ones doing a lot of the atrocities in Africa today. And Soleimani is the guy that helped take out ISIS in the Middle East. Exactly, and actually we should almost be thankful to Soleimani because we were allied with him back under Obama in around 2015 when ISIL was making forays into uh, northern uh, Iraq, into Moselle, into Crete, and Soleimani basically led his team, and it wasn't uh, you know, an officially an Iranian army, but a group, I'm sure, of Shiite militias to drive ISIS out of uh, Iraq, and for that we should be thankful for him. And in a sense, this is what I'm saying about Donald Trump, that he's got to stick with a, a coherent narrative, because uh, remember, what we've been hearing well, a Paul, lot... you like sound like a really smart guy that's got a background in, in, a, in a lot of research, but... but I, and you're absolutely right. Everything you're saying is totally true. And D.C.'s full of criminals, and they'll turn anything Trump does into something bad. And this is really dangerous, like Tucker Carlson said. We're going to go to break. I'm going to come back to you because uh, I want to give you the floor. Smart callers. But I want to ask you as we come back, Paul, why then did they attack the embassy? Why are they doing this to the ships? Why are they shooting stuff down? Uh, why are they playing into this? Why are they meeting with the back channel of Obama and Hillary and the deep state, who we know are trying to use Iran to, to embarrass Trump, they're using China to try to get North Korea to embarrass America. And Trump stood up and, and, and North Korea backed down. This is a very strong message to North Korea and to China right now. And it's about Trump's leadership. So I get the whole history and the background and all of that. I don't know about what Trump did here. And what do we do when people attack our embassies? I'm going to ask you that when we come back. Or I just asked the question. We're back in 60 seconds with Paul in New Jersey. I'm going to go to Andrew. And everybody else, stay with us on this live Friday global transmission. Whatever you do, spread the live link from band.video and the drudgereport.com link to our story. University studies and things that say most exported terrorism is out of Saudi Arabia is uh, the whole Al-Qaeda variety. But the Shiites have their political Islamic operations around the world. And they do have the real competent sleeper cells. Um, and... They've said they have those sleeper cells, and they've said they're going to have a savage revenge, that's a quote, uh, against us. So I'm asking the caller, Paul, what do we do then Why, when, when, when Iran goes into the embassy? And I know you're going to say, well, we bombed some of their militias, yeah, that were killing contractors. And I mean, I, Iran is pushing back, and I know you're going to say, well, we've got sanctions on them. Uh, so... You're going to say we're being pushed by Saudi Arabia and Israel uh, into this, and I think to a certain extent you're right. Um, and so what do you think should be done? Where do you think this is going? Well, for one, I, I think uh, the Shiite militias in, our, in Iraq are not fully controlled by the Iranians. I would argue that they're actually a bunch of hotheads. They form their own sectionalized or uh, factionalized little groups. And then they go off on their own without orders from Iran. I, I would it just like, by the way, that in eastern Ukraine, some of the secessionists in the Donbass uh, go on their own and don't really get their orders from Russia either. I, I think the situations are, are somewhat similar when you have a great power, uh, which is sympathetic towards, uh, you know, expansionism along their border, but they don't really want to own it. You understand they don't want a direct connection oh, to Oh, sure, it. you always have a group rise up and then, and then claim it wants to join you later. I mean, my, not bragging, it's an interesting historical fact. My ancestors 
who actually worked with President Jackson uh, more than a decade before Texas seceded from uh, Mexico. And it was all a plan. I mean, I'll just be honest, to come in because uh, you know, the Mexican government couldn't occupy tanks, build it up, uh, and then as soon as they tried to ban Protestantism, uh, basically use that as a way to launch Texas. And so even back then, I mean, the U.S. government was already planning its Western expansion into places like Texas. So you're absolutely right that that's how these proxy operations work. That, that's just textbook. Yeah, and I, I, but uh, as for my wish list, I, you know, we have to remember that that three-quarter of a billion dollar embassy uh, complex, and really is more like a fort, was built by the 9-11 culprit George Bush Jr. And the point is, the fact of the matter is, as an American, I don't really want to kill my way out of keeping that fort over there in Iraq. To me, it doesn't matter. It, to me, it's not a big deal if we strategically just pack our bags and retreat. Oh, I agree with you. Entirely. I think... I, I think Trump's original instinct to pull the hell out of there and let them kill each other or fix it, hopefully, is the right way to go. But how does he do that then when the neocons and the left are going to call him weak? Well, you just let him call you weak and, and go to the American people and explain it and take it you know, take it in, on the stump and out on the uh, campaign. Well, just where do you think this is going to end? Because it, it could certainly end really bad. How do you think the Iranians are going to respond? Or are they smart enough not to escalate? I think they're exactly that. They won't escalate. Everything's going to cool down, and we'll forget about it in three weeks. They're, they're smart. They don't want a direct conflict. They have to build up still and work on their economy and other issues, stronger alliances with the Chinese and Russia, and build more missiles in their mountain uh, bunkers there. <laughs> you know, I, I think they're a very smart group of people. And actually, I would argue if the goal is to rule the Middle East, I would think that you'd want to divide it. And to divide the Middle East, since Sunnis are about, I think, 85% of the Muslim population in the region, I think it behooves us to make Iran into the enemy. I think we should make, actually, Iran more influential and more powerful, so then we have a better balance of power. Sure, but I mean, are you then agreeing, are you, are you agreeing with Obama and his shadow diplomacy, when, what they've been doing? Well, I like the thought that you do it on the cheap. I don't like that Obama toppled Libya or uh, Syria at all by any means, nor do I want to spread this carnage and turn the whole Middle East into a charnel house. Uh, but I, I do believe uh, they would do it on the cheap. I don't. Well, let me ask you this. Why do you think Trump interest. did this? I mean, I think he knows that Iran is probing and, and, and talking to the deep state and thinks he's weak, and I think he did it to telegraph strength. That, yeah, very likely, but I think the Iranians are going to back down out of this. They're, they're smart cookies, so... All right, smart caller, Paul. Thank you. Thank you.